Halloween. Children and animals, they say, never uh, do it. <laughs> yes, indeed. Did you... Were you with dogs for hardly any of the time for that? Because with all the animation, presumably, you're acting to a kind of blank space. Uh, yeah, but even when they're without the animation, they're kind of alive and they're yeah. paying attention to you and wondering what's next, so it's uh, not so bad. It seems to me you're a man who's gone from, from one hit to another. I mean, most people are looking in their lives if they're remembered for one thing. Right. You're remembered for Taxi, for Back to the Future, for the Animal Astronomy, for so many. But the career started, you know, quite exceptional with One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Well, yes, the real that's story. right, yeah. So what was it like being thrust into that with Jack Nicholson? Uh, it, it was uh, like a dream come true. I'd done theatre for, for many, many, many years, and I wanted to get into the... I wanted to do film, but sometimes act, actors are great on stage, but they don't make that bridge to film. And I was beginning to feel that I was perhaps in that in one of those. And then it came along, and... Uh, Jack Nicholson was an idol of mine for other films he'd done, Carl Knowledge, last, you know, and suddenly there I am, and it, uh, I expected every day the director was going to tap me on the shoulder and say, sorry, Chris, you don't cut it, you know, <laughs> and send me home, but it worked out, and... Uh, it was you know, always, always, it worked out extremely well. Did you learn a lot from Nicholson? Is he one of those oh, actors he, you can he's, watch? Oh, he's fabulous. I mean, I mean... Uh, I, I, I was, you know, in the theatre, and it was very, you know, theatre was like this pure form of acting, and I thought, you know, who knows? And I would see Nicholson sit down with the other actors and go over a scene, and each time it went through, he would do it in a different way, but it was always uh, uh, pertinent. It was still always in the scene. Was, his facility was just amazing, and he's extraordinarily generous with other actors. He does... Uh, there was one time... Uh, when, when the shooting had a schedule had to be a rearranged because one of the actors was ill and we, uh, right in the midst of a scene we were doing and it was about a month before we came back to the scene and the scene started out and I couldn't find my way. I'd lost the connection with the scene and Nicholson just very quietly came over to me without making any kind of, you know, just and said something. I don't remember exactly what it was but it put me right back there where I, I needed to be and he's like that. He's just... A generous gives, gives such yeah. so much yeah. to the uh, people he's working with. It's wonderful. You do seem to get saddled with playing people who are relatively bonkers. I, relatively, <laughs> yes. Relatively. Yes. Taxi I, was a case. I can't explain point. it. I can't explain it. <laughs> oh, uh, no, I did. I did wonder what I was going to encounter when you came out. You really like that. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. Uh, yes, that seems to uh, <laughs> be a trend. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you, is that something you seek out, or do the roles seek you out? I, I guess they seek me out because I, I, I'm very puzzled sometimes how, why somebody thought of me for that particular role. Uh, yeah. You know, like like uh, the uh, Star Trek, uh, the third film, The Return of Spock. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I'd ever done in my life to seem like I could be a, a Klingon, you know. But <laughs> suddenly, suddenly there I was, you know. And, and, uh, and then I, I grew up with the Charles Adams cartoons. Yes. Uh, and, yeah. and Uncle Fester, yes. when I was growing up as an adolescent, I would go through that magazine to find, because Uncle Fester was a favorite of mine, you know, I just, I just, and then decades later, I get this call to be Uncle Fester, and I, I was like stunned, you know. Because you don't look a lot like I Jackie Coogan, who played I, the original. Yeah, and, I, and I've got a narrow f face, and I don't have the body, and I thought, how can this be? But somebody saw it, and we worked yeah, it out, and, and, and it was like, Wonderful to play a character that you've sort of grown up with and then suddenly it comes back years later and you have the opportunity to do it. So I've been very fortunate. Back to the future, though. We'll yeah. be with you forever. What an amazing... The you and, and, you know, Mr Fox there doing your bit. Oh. It was, did you imagine it was going to be so huge, that film? Not exactly. I, uh, I, I mean, uh, Spielberg was one of the producers in Universal and Bob Zemeckis being the director. So they had a lot going for it, but uh, I remember we went to do a video and uh, Huey Lewis, uh, who did the music for Back to the Future, we were up all night someplace in Northern California doing a, a video, and, and he, Huey Lewis came over to, uh, to some of us, and he said, this film, uh, uh, is this going to go anywhere? Is this going to, you know, I mean, because... I mean, so yes, no, it's going to go back to <laughs> yeah, the future. Yeah, he, he didn't know whether it's just, you know, picking up a, a, you know, a paycheck or whether it had a future, you know, and, uh, you know, 
so you didn't really know, but it, yeah. it took off. That's what it's stupid to say that Back to the Future and, and now the rest is history. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Christopher Lloyd. Great. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.